Well, welcome uh, to Local Music Show here on uh, Hermitage FM. I'm joined, as always, uh, by my co-host, uh, Kevin Gorn. Good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Squire. Can I just say what a wonderful experience this is being in the studio with you this afternoon? Goodness me. What, what have I done? Uh, <laughs> it's what <laughs> you're I about done, to do. Have Can I done something wrong? <laughs> I, feel, I feel almost awkward now, actually. I'm bit. just being nice to you. Uh, we're waiting for Martha Bean to arrive. Uh, yes. Obviously, she'll be here very shortly, but we have two guests in the studio, which perhaps you could introduce. We do indeed. And you're being very polite tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, well, after no, what... thank you. Oh, <laughs> no, thank you. Well, after what you said to me earlier, about me earlier... Um, what about did I say earlier? I'll remind you a little bit later. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, so here in the studio joining us is Carmen and a member of her band. Is that right? Yes, right, yeah. we are here. Yeah. In the studio. It helps yeah. if I turn your microphone on. <laughs> uh, so I do that well, bit again. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Confirming hi. to everybody. Yeah. We are, in fact, in the studio. Yeah. Excellent. So hi, Carmen, and hi, Aaron. Hello. Good evening. Excellent. Good evening. And welcome. Thanks. Thank you. So, just so the listeners can understand your type of music, what would you say it's like? What sort of genre does it fit into? Well, I'm kind of very into the whole sort of fusion of creating something new and trying to find a different sound, something that stands out. Um, so I've got a nice bit of blend in the album that's um, that I'm releasing of jazz. It's got some jazz, some soul, a bit of some funk vibes in there as well. So, so what sort so, of music do you used to listen to? It, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Blues as well. There's a little taste of blues in there in some places. So it's just all the music genres that I've grown up with and really enjoyed and trying to create a kind of mash, mishmash. So influences Amy Winehouse, I've just thought of. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her, her first album I really, really enjoyed because it was a lot uh, more jazzy stuff. I really enjoyed that. Um, but um, anywhere from Ella Fitzgerald of course the classic jazz singers and yeah, then lauren lovely. hill and you know the more modern soul as well so do, do you write do you write your own stuff yes oh right yeah okay. this is all stuff on the album this is all stuff that i've written and then collaborated with my band because we perform around leicester uh restaurants pubs clubs doing funk music funk soul music as well so and uh, you, you're kind of a romantic person. I asked that because of the titles of the songs we're going to play. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I guess I suppose so. Um, the album's kind of a uh, a bit of a concept, really, isn't it? From yeah um, previous endeavours with partners and the like. So yeah, I, I mean, it's writing from experience, I guess. As other people have said that before. That yeah, it's kind of um, it, it, it was a concept in the sense that each song, the the order that it's in, is tracking a progression through from a, a you know through a period of time in my life. So each song represents a different period and a different kind of mindset and a different thing that was happening. So it's kind of conceptual in that sense. So does each song then follow on as as in the whole album sort of makes a story? Yeah, the the whole thing's kind of leads up to where I am now a and oh, things that I'm yeah. Now. Concept I love that jazz. sort of thing. Though. Concept it's it's jazz soul with a bit of funk. It's our first concept album, <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me personally try and want to listen to the lyrics or try harder to listen to the lyrics than I normally do to try and piece. Oh, yeah, well that's good. Together the bit. That's good. Yeah. yeah, you can kind of see you'll be able to hear the the progression and the, the things that are kind of referenced back and then as well. well to going to play the first song. So is this a sad song? Because no. it suggests it. Loved you last night. Well, it does. It you'll is. hear it's not. It's not beat song. Okay, it's juxtaposition. It's yeah, probably. <laughs> but I hope you like it anyway. Okay, uh, let's play this then. <laughs> this is called "Love You Last Night" from the group Carmen.
why i was being nice to you earlier john you were being nice to me earlier because because you kept telling me that you kept saying to me loved you last night <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah a bit of flat going on in here ladies yeah. and gents <laughs> i've got i'm blushing now <laughs> <laughs> i blush very easily <laughs> but that was a beautiful song so that Thank was one you. of your own would you yes would you like to was. tell us a little bit about it well it was written a long time ago and it's a kind of a frustration of a long time ago yes. excuse me for interrupting I've, i didn't so how long have you been around then i've been writing well, songs for a very long time but never ha- kind of had the means or the confidence to kind of present it to my band and to my you know, people that i was working with and kind of say this is what i've written um so it's a really big thing for me because i've kind of been able to say okay I'm, i've got the confidence to go here's my stuff shall we do something with it right that must be a big step so yeah but i've i've got i've written tens and tens of songs so crikey yeah. so only recently then you've just had the confidence to get out get a band together and then perform your material Well, i've been performing for a very long time i've been gigging since i was about five years old in front of audiences um but it's been in the last couple of years that i've got this set up together do you have um, any formal singing training then? Or no. You just no, natural, I did it all natural, myself. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I just loved it so much. I thought, I want to learn how to do this, and then just listen and listen and listen you to loads of different... people, yeah. Yeah, and then kind, kind of create your own sound, so... Yeah. Is there anyone in particular you've tried to sort of base it on, or is that just... Um, is that just your sound coming through? I've just... I, I've basically taken all the kind of vocal techniques that I really admired and tried to pull them off and try yeah, and it's a classic influence you try to lose a lot of things don't you yeah yeah, yeah. um so vibrato i originally learned from charlotte church because i thought it sounded really nice and i was listening to her her cd when i was about eight eight or nine and yeah. thought that sounds good i want to be able to do that and just sort of practice and practice until i feel like we should ask aaron something aaron <laughs> yeah <laughs> is she is, is she very bossy as well then um <laughs> you could say it. no she's she's all right um <laughs> She's all right. But how does I've, it work? How does it work I've, from a band point of view? Essentially, um, 
it started really as like a function band um and then like Dee just uh carmen just said um that she eventually got the confidence to sort of say i've written some of my own material um in which point i was studying um basically music tech and i went all right i'll record it for you um and then sort of between both of us we sort of steered it into where it is now so um i think on this project it's been a lot of toing and froing between the both of us between sort of one minute Dee's running the ship and the next minute i'll be telling her to get in the studio and get here at this time and, is she good at taking and, orders or not yeah she's she's fine like <laughs> once once she got used to once she got used to me and she realized that once i'd set my mind on it it was going to happen because you both yeah you both got an important part to play though haven't you really so you got to respect each other from that point yeah actually. and uh, it, i think obviously it helps in that we'd already sort of played a lot together in um so sort I've of got to know each other so it wasn't a new experience really in in mm, yeah. that sense that we were new people yeah, sort of to each other mm. it was just sort of elaborating on what relationship was already we already had really mm, I'd say yeah. and taking it to probably more of a professional level in at times yeah, it's and good also that, relaxing it it's good actually that Com is just that. nodding every, <laughs> everything you say she's nodding so, <laughs> so that's got to be good yeah, yeah she, she's bottling it. it all up and then it's, it's all going to come out <laughs> I'll beat him up later <laughs> outside <laughs> so, so tell us about uh, so have you been if you've been performing for quite a long time why is this this is your first LP release is yes. that right yes it is why is it taking you so long to get your first LP out then I didn't have the means to get it recorded I think because I uh, studied at Leicester College with Aaron um, and we were kind of together all the time and he was doing uh, we were performing together in the function band and then he was doing his music tech stuff as well it kind of fell into place and i sort of said okay well maybe this is the opportunity this is the time now um that i've got all these amazing musicians and people around me to kind of go okay this is what i've got right um can we do something with it and everyone was just really really brilliant about it and everything was recorded and mastered and aaron mastered everything for me and mixed everything for me so yeah because i wouldn't have been able to do that and i wouldn't have known where to go to get that done I wouldn't yeah, have, sure. and i want to be you know give my stuff to people that i trust as well so i know it's, it's nice gonna... to have that other person who's got different abilities to you yeah. like kevin's different to me hmm. <laughs> thank god <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so so it, so it's kind of like uh, yeah, so it was just the right moment. Then by the sounds of it, yeah, and yeah, it was. I think I think it's just uh, leading up to now. I think now I feel like I'm in the right place to be able to finally go. Here you go, people. <laughs> Here's my stuff. <laughs> you know where I didn't really have the confidence to do that before. So and of course you've got your LP release gig as well, yes. haven't you? Coming. I'm up. very excited about that. That yeah. is next Saturday, twentieth, twentieth September. This Saturday. This Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> and where's that? That's at St Martin's Coffee House in Leicester. Oh, I know that, yeah. Yeah, St Martin's Square in Leicester City Centre. Yeah, I went so. to see... Ooh, Raptor it? Sound. Raptor Sound there, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, was, that was, Yeah, the atmosphere was incredible, wasn't it? Upstairs, lovely. Mm. Yeah, it's really, it's really it's, nice Everybody's drinking coffee and chilling. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, that's what we wanted. We wanted it to be quite laid back, but also have a really nice atmosphere up there and just like a, a place we can, you know, perform and... Just show off what we've what we've done, what we've been working right. on. It's okay, candles, uh, we've got a track to play called "Seduction of the Promise." Then tell yes, us about this. This is uh, the title track of the uh, off the album, basically because we didn't have a title for it, and we thought let's just call it, let's just name it after the album. But it's kind of the same thing. It's like um, b- being promised something, and then you know being lo- being lured into feeling secure, and then kind of realizing that it didn't there. really. Yeah. So the so, promise seduced you. Well, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Someday I will find a place you never could be Then I know that I am now true Yeah. 
classic chilled out song <laughs> i don't know if it's a classic quite yet but thank you for the confidence there <laughs> it's beautiful it really was thank i noticed you. your so your lp uh, launch gig you've got a, a concept of pay pay what you like yeah so we wanted um, to kind of just go if you like what we're doing if you want to come come <laughs> and listen and because we're not just doing stuff from the album we're doing a, a really nice mix of some of my classic classic favorites you know like um a lot of soul stuff marvin gay Shaka Khan, Stevie Wonder, with me and my funky bros. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. Exactly, yeah, stuff, yeah. exactly, <laughs> yes. That will be happening. I'm old, old enough to remember you. <laughs> so we're going to be doing a really nice mix of all my favourite soul, funk, jazz songs and then kind of blend them in with the stuff that's on the album so people will be able to buy an album at the gig as well and, and obviously purchase it online if they want to. Yeah, mm-hmm. very good. Uh, website address and stuff? Well, we've got the Bandcamp address, which is where the album's being sold. What's the Bandcamp address? Come on, Aaron. Um, it is misscarmen.bandcamp.com. Oh, yes. Well done. Well remembered. Miss Carmen. And you haven't got a Facebook page, com. is that right? Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's, yeah. that's slightly unusual. Is Elusive. there a reason for that? Or? Well, everything's kind of going through the, the labels, Facebook. Ah, right. So, um, I, I just, I and don't what's know. the name of the label? It's Cosmonaut Cult. Ah. Yes. Okay, well, thanks very much for coming in. I hope you've Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you very uh, much for having me. Nice to hear your music played on the radio as well. Yes, very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank uh, you. We're expecting formal warning on the phone uh, any minute now. They're not phoned yet. In the hope uh, that they will phone in the next three minutes, I'm going to play a song from them. Uh, this is called Twisted. And Martha Bean is now here. Uh, she got through the traffic eventually. She's coming after 6.30.
formal warning and a song called uh, Twisted. And I'm pleased to say that Ash is on the phone and uh, got me and Kevin Gorn in the studio here at Home Homes Use FM. Ash, welcome to the programme. How you doing, guys? You all right? Yeah, good to hear Hi, that. Ash. Good to hear that on the radio again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> and just before we talk about what's happening this week, uh, just a reflection on what's been happening to you, because obviously you've had, you know, the Tigers ground, you've had, you know, Glaston Budget. It's been a pretty good year so far, hasn't it? Yeah, we've had some really good stuff playing at Leicester Music Festival with famous acts like UB40 and lots more bigger acts. And yeah, we've had a really fortunate year this year. Um, Probably would have liked to have been in the studio a little more this year. We've we've been more of a live band this year, I suppose, but it's been worked on. So yeah, we've had a great year. Yeah. What What would you say is your biggest gig this year so far, Ash? Um, for for the name, you'd say Leicester Music Festival. Ah oh, yes, but, yes. But if I'm being honest, I I always enjoy gigs where we put our own headline shows on, and it's really busy and. You know the nights for us, really. So I'd probably say O2 this year uh, when we had uh, the O2 gig. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's more your own crowd, isn't it? Then. Yeah, and it, it it was great, you know. Um, and we get a chance to sort of promote it and everything, and you, you get the reward of your own show. But Leicester Music Festival at the same time was awesome, and hopefully we'll be invited back, and the festival grows at the same time. So we're playing front of more. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Glaston Budget Audition, uh, it's a process you have to go through, I guess. So be, I know you enjoyed uh, playing there earlier this year, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we always love Glaston Budget. We've been there six, seven years now, and we're auditioning on Friday to play there as well. And, we, you know, it, it, like you say, it has to be done. You have to earn your stripes. So, yeah, we enjoy doing it. Do you play there every year, Ash? Yes, we do. You yeah. Do. Um we've we've not had one year off since they started taking unsigned bands. Excellent. Uh so we've been there I think this if we get on this year it'll be our seventh or sixth year, yeah. And you, you obviously moved uh when you uh, because most people start on the icon stage, they're moving to the big top, but you've kind of done the big top now, so is there, uh I suppose in the back of your mind, the main stage would be good, wouldn't it? Well, th- that'd be amazing. I mean, we've been on the big top year, big top every time we've played. Oh, really? So, okay. and I kind of spoke to Moz and you know the organizer, and I'm sounding him out about the main stage, and he's he's very coy. Sometimes he, he says it's a possibility, <laughs> some nights it's not. So, so I suppose it's just what mood we catch him in, and how well we play on the audition. So, but, <laughs> but I think thing is though, that's that's where the atmosphere is though, isn't it? In the big top, that's yeah. where you really want to play. Yeah, I agree. If I'm being honest, the sa- I personally think the sound is better in the big top, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and the atmosphere, like I say, you get your people in there and it's nice and black and dark and warm and hot and sweaty when you guys come on. It's just That's a really it, good yeah. atmosphere. He likes it when it's hot and sweaty. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Can't we all? laughs> OK, well, good to get you on. I uh, hope it goes well. I'm sure you'll have no problem getting there. Uh, they, they want a minimum of 20 people normally for auditions these days, don't they? That's right, yeah. I mean, there's always the pressure on to, to get the people there. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely all for making sure that bands do their own promotion because there's been gigs where we've had bands on and they've turned up with three people and it is a really disheartening feeling, especially if you the guys organising the events. But at the same time, I think maybe there can be a, a dot too much pressure on some of these bands to... Because I've seen some bands down there that have been cracking and they've not got on solely because of people. So I suppose there is an element I agree with and then there's not as well. So, <laughs> so when's your audition, Ash? It's this Friday. At the we're Shed. Playing, yeah, we're this Friday at the Shed and we're playing at the O2 Academy in Liverpool. Uh, it's like a shop window for RCA Records on Saturday at the O2 Academy in Liverpool. So, wow. so, yeah. so really Friday's a rehearsal for Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean to say it like that, but yeah, we can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Uh, good to get you on the phone, Ash. I uh, hope it goes well Friday and Saturday for you. Thanks very much. But, but thank you very much for your time again, guys. Cheers. See you, Ash. That's uh, Ash from Formal Wayne. So, uh, catch him at the Shed on Friday. Uh, that's quite exciting about uh, Saturday, though, isn't mm, it? RCA Records. RCA wow. Records. Who knows? Might end might up with a deal. deal. Yeah. Right, Martha Bean is here. We're going to play one of her songs, then we'll have a chat. Uh, this is uh, a new song from her. It's called Song of the Sea.
just for a while And I will keep you safe from harm Be your calm through the storm And I will keep you Song of the Sea, uh, that's one Martha Bean. I'm pleased to say that Martha got through the track of it, traffic eventually. Uh, broken down lorry got in the way, didn't it? Or a something? little bit, yeah. <laughs> Just general trafficness. But it's, uh, it's horrible when you're trying to get somewhere and you get held up, though, isn't yeah. it? Because you can't kind of every There's nothing you can do. Every, every kind of minute seems like an age. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you sent us a text, and luckily, Con- uh, you know, Coleman lady came in early. Yeah. So that worked very so well. It all turned out in the Everything's wash. Everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I was, I was just reminiscing. I I, I think uh, I last saw you play live. Um, you remember the Sound House? We did a charity gig. Yeah. Some is it a couple of years ago. It probably it seems is like now. a long time ago. Yeah. Now. Well, the the last public gig I did was in December last year. I haven't gigged for for nine months now, so you wouldn't have seen me until then anyway. But. Um, also, yeah, I hadn't done that many gigs before that either, so... Yeah. And I remember from the gig that you had a kind of like a, a mini orchestra. That's kind of what you do, isn't it? You... Um, yeah, well, I've got... Um, that. I've extended a string ensemble. I, I've, I've been playing with my friend Mirka on viola and my dad on cello for quite a while, but just recently for this album, I've just... Um, I'm about to launch... Uh, we've added a violin to the lineup, so it's it's like a proper string section what, now. What's happened to the Wurlitzer? Have you still got that? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Wurlitzer. Because I remember seeing Strawberry Fields, I think it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. 2013. I had yeah. a Wurlitzer and the six other people. It was, it was like a massive, <laughs> massive band with you there. Yeah, there's Wurlitzer and drums and bass like and yes, obviously this song here, Song of the Sea, is uh, isn't quite as uh, full. <laughs> but no. um, Who changed the clocks is a much bigger mix. Well, we're going to play. Right we're going to play that next. But how did you start? How did you approach the album that you're doing now? What was the thinking well, behind it's- it? been five years in the making really I've been writing songs for quite a long time that I I just realised I really really needed to record and uh, and I re- released an EP in 2011 uh, called State of the Art and then my single January last year so uh, and that was a piece of this world so I thought well it'd be lovely to record an album and I sat down with the producer Jez Burns who works at Yellow Bean Studios off yeah, uh, Western yeah, Road yeah. in Leicester and uh, we basically just figured it out and how we were going to 
to do it and uh, just basically hammered at it for three months solid instead because when I did the EP we sort of did the six tracks on the EP and we spent nine months in dribs and drabs doing it with this it's like every day we had free we were just at it every day kind of thing so it's a lot more intense (laughs) yeah and i remember talking to you before you're very much happy to be a local artist because i I think i asked you about you know do you want to get a deal and all this sort of thing but you're really not interested in that well i that's what you told me at the time yeah i mean um i don't mind really it's uh i suppose maybe i am more interested in it these days than i was before but i i'm open to what whatever happens i will i'll see where things take me if people are interested then i'm not going to refuse necessarily it depends on the deal <laughs> I, I think you're one of these people where your rep in my opinion anyway your reputation precedes you i've heard oh, a lot about you. you before i actually saw you oh, okay for years so presumably oh. you've been performing for quite a few years. Yeah, I suppose sort of the last four or five years. I've been and you just try and keep it to Leicester, Leicester locally. Yeah, because Kevin was saying he's photographed you a lot, but not actually yeah. met you in person. Oh. Oh. Remember, I, was it the OB, in the musician as well? Did I you, did. Yeah, the, the OBS, OBS there a couple yeah. of times. So yeah, yeah. If you were there, I guess yeah. I yeah. Seen you as I say, I used to do some stuff for um, music in Leicester. Travel a lot oh, for yeah. music in Leicester, and he's he was always telling me about you as oh, well. Okay. So as I say, you, you, you've got quite a good. You've got a good rep. Oh, you have. Thank so. you. I, my aim actually now is to kind of spread a bit further away from Leicester. I mean, considering I've only ever gigged in Nottingham once and never in Derby, and I'm thinking about I've never gigged in Colville. <laughs> and um, um, there, are, there are plenty of venues which I could could spread out and that's just talking locally yeah. i'd love to do some gigs in london and manchester where i've got i've got a, a load of friends who live in those cities but i've i've never had the chance so i've been messaging them trying to find out the best venues and who who might have me but i'm aware it's kind of a chicken and egg situation with these things because you know people don't want to put you on their bill unless they know you can bring people but if you can't bring people because you don't live yeah. there then it depends it's how many <laughs> friends you've got in manchester exactly what you need them to do is yeah. to bring their friends well, that's, home, that yeah. i guess that would be brilliant if they're able to do that but you know just see how it goes or gig swap as well like if you yeah. if you support somebody here then perhaps mm. um but then, or if if, that, if somebody supports you here, then perhaps you can support them in their hometown. That's true. Or something that like is, that. yeah, that's a very good idea. It's yeah. a common problem for a lot of people, though, isn't it? They want yeah. to play outside, but it's, it's actually finding somebody to take a chance on you as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what about your your songwriting? I, I mean, you, you're the lyricist, and then put the music down. How does it work? Oh, uh, they usually come very closely together. Um, music first, I'd say, generally speaking, and. Uh, and it's usually like a chord sequence and then I come up with a verse before I've even figured out the chorus chords and then it just kind of um, happens. I I have this kind of way of doing it where I just literally, I'll sit down and, you know, it'll come because I'm noodling around and improvising but then if I actually allow it to turn into a song I have to finish it then I've got to get it all done in one go and then it feels more round I like the expression simple. noodling around <laughs> <laughs> I do that a lot <laughs> uh, so we're going to play Who Changed the Clocks next mm-hmm. so obviously we have to change the clocks a couple of times a year oh yeah I hadn't even thought about it. Ah, are you not <laughs> Uh, so what's the basis of this song? Um, it's about the passing of time, I suppose. It, it feels sometimes that someone's... you like, it's not 2014, are you joking? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know. Well, uh, um, yeah. But sometimes things go so fast, but sometimes things just take forever when you're trying to finish an album or... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I tell it, yeah, because you know. I remember thinking, oh, 2014, goodness, I've, I've reached a big age Yeah. this year, so... Have you? What age yeah, is that, 21? Yeah, or 60. <laughs> that is a big age. Yeah, it's a big age. You're thinking, well, uh, but it's just a number. So, yeah. yeah. It's a way I'm trying That's to look it. at it. He's yeah. crying. <laughs> yeah. To consider something like 2020 is sort of six years away. Yeah. Just kind of mixes but, with my head we, always, we all read a book called 1984, which seemed a long time in the future. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was little, working out, taking ages to work out how old I'd be in 2000. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that, that, that doesn't seem like that long ago no. when I was working that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who, 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 come on, who changed the clock? Let's okay. play the track. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> Slowly 
Melting in ways we can't control One day the same And oh so sunny Everything changed as my back was turned Who changed the clocks from Martha Bean, who's uh, put the headphones on to listen to the end. <laughs> I, no I noticed that. Um, very nice song as well. And that's going to be a Thank single, you. is it not? Yes, it's going to be released on 16th of November, so a little while away. So we're way ahead. Yes, we are way ahead. You're the first person to play it ever. Wow, so yes. There we go. <laughs> Debut appearance here on the show. That's it, yeah. Uh, but uh, how long did it take you to decide that was going to be the single? Is it fairly straightforward from well, your point of view? I st I'm still not sure, <laughs> so no. Well, you've got to make a decision, but, um, Absolutely, you? yeah. I mean, I thought... Um, because it compares because Song of the Sea so gentle and simple it's a nice contrast to that one I guess so uh, well, yeah, and some so, of the other songs yeah at what point do you decide when you're going to release it obviously it's going to be a single but is it actually going to be an EP or um, a, a taster for the album sort of thing it's just going to be released digitally so just uh, on download basically yeah, for yeah. Um, for that song and then the album will if properly be released on the 8th of December so that's a, a while away still okay and then it will be a, available online so look, obviously you've got this gig coming up at the White Theatre which is quite, mm -hmm. quite a big venue to play as well I yeah. mean I've been there a few times to see uh, a few different yeah, sites of the band. So how did that come about, the wife is? Um, well, do you know the sound guy, uh, engineer, uh, Neil Seagrot? He's known name. as Big Neil. Yeah, yeah. He's incredible. He does such a good job at sound. Um, and he was pestering me, actually, to do a gig at the Y because he does the sound there. And he said, oh, you'd be brilliant at the Y. Let's just sort it out. So I thought, OK, then. And then ages ago, this was sort of January, I started organising it and talking to the Y and stuff. And then... Um, 
and then basically I, I asked uh, David Wyatt to play and we were just going to do a gig and then I in that meantime decided to record the album and then I decided to make it the pre-release so <laughs> it all kind of came together afterwards and the gig is on the 26th it's 26th yeah Friday 26th month. so yeah. not this Friday next Friday and um, so yeah he's going to be playing as well with his full band and uh, yeah it should be should be really good very exciting it's a nice venue as well isn't it it yeah. is and considering it's so big, there's always a really nice sort of intimate atmosphere, I find, in there. Yeah. Um, really, really nice. Well, the, the guy who's doing promoting, uh, we've sold 56 tickets so far, so I know some, yes. some tickets have sold. Excellent. Um, and he was saying, we'll keep just the downstairs open initially, and once there's over 100 tickets sold, he'll open up the balcony, because then it mm. will make it feel quite cosy downstairs, yeah. as opposed to everyone yeah. being really spread out. And obviously then you've got the album coming out, so you're kind of almost a gig to launch the, the that's so it, it's, it's like a it's a pre-release gig so people will be able to buy the album on the night but they won't until the 8th of december between that those dates they won't be able to buy it so so, it'll so, only so, be so the benefit of going to the gig is you get it, yeah you get it up front you get it before anyone else does yeah, <laughs> yeah. so pre-release then that's a good yeah. marketing yeah. really isn't it? yeah so that's... so of the gigs are being planned i guess for after the album comes out yeah that's it so hopefully well before then as well i'm i'm hoping to do a few more gigs in november and December and then January as well to to push the album a bit more as well. So. And at the Y Theatre, will you have your full band there as well? Yeah, yeah. we oh, had our brilliant. first practice last night. First, as in full band, because we've been practicing strings separately and band separately for a few weeks. We and put everyone together. Yeah, with the yeah. Wurlitzer, and uh, and it's it's really hard when you're trying to get seven people together in the same place, but it it worked. So. <laughs> Okay, well, we're having a conversation, and that's the title of the track we're going to play now. So okay. <laughs> is that simply what it's about? It's um, me trying to find a way of helping friends going through a hard time, I suppose, having a conversation. Okay, <laughs> Martha Bean, thank you. No, this is the wrong track. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry that was uh, something else. I didn't change tracks. Here it is.
So Martha Bean, thanks for coming in. You'll see her at the Wife Theatre. I should sure check it out a week on f- Friday. Friday, that's right. I think it says Saturday, yeah. That was a song called The Conversation. All right, uh, time for one more track, uh, The Whores. Now, this is a pre-runner to Carmen, so, Kevin, explain why we're playing this one. Yeah, well, it's just having had uh, Carmen on the show earlier, we had um, Aaron, who also used to play in The Hordes a couple of years ago. Very good local band, and a little bit different as well, and I, one of my favourites, so I thought, oh, that gives me a perfect opportunity or excuse to play a song by The Hordes. And this is called Limited Resources. <laughs> Uh, the hordes are uh, no longer around limited resources.